Hi, my name is Tristan Petrash. Now, before we get into it, I just want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to the Modmin team at The Greatest ExoCook. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Long story short, the ExoCooks are a group of food lovers who also happen to be fans of The Greatest Generation, a Star Trek podcast. At the end of each episode, they have a segment called Priority One Messages, where people pay $100 for a personal message and $200 for a promotional one. Ben, our first Priority One message is of a promotional nature. Whoa. And that message goes like this. The Modmin team at The Greatest ExoCook want to give a shout out to an up-and-coming YouTube chef and FOD, Tristan Petrash. His lovely channel is filled with delicious Korean dishes that even Neelix couldn't mess up. Wow. If you try something fun from his channel, don't forget to share it at The Greatest ExoCook with the hashtag Tristan made me do it. Wow. I love Korean. It was seriously one of the nicest things anyone has ever done for me. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> The entire ExoCook community has been super supportive of my channel basically since day one. So to them and all friends of DeSoto everywhere, thank you. Now, I've mentioned rice cakes a couple times on this channel before, but never really got down to the nitty gritty of it. So that's exactly what we'll be doing today, making our very own rice cakes. To start, grab yourself a big old mixing bowl. To that, we're going to add a mixture of both sweet glutinous rice flour and regular rice flour, along with some room temperature water. The reason I do a mix of both is because regular rice flour will make the cakes dense and chewy, whereas the glutinous will make them softer. So doing a roughly 2 to 1 ratio will give them a firm but soft texture overall. Combine until a rough dough starts to form. Then, using your hands, knead until it all comes together and holds its shape. It should be a little firm, but still pliable. Think modeling clay. Transfer the dough to a work surface and break into smaller but equal pieces. Don't worry if it seems a bit on the drier side for a dough, that's exactly what you're looking for. Work the dough in your hands a few times to bind it together, then flatten it into discs. In order to make the rice cakes, we first need to steam them. You can put down pieces of parchment paper, but cheesecloth or muslin cloth works best. Just make sure to wet it first so they don't stick and the cloth will stay put. Then place the discs in the steamer. It doesn't matter too much if they touch, as long as there's some room for steam to circulate around them. We'll be recombining them all afterwards anyway. Bring a large pot, half full of water to boil over high heat, and place the steamer basket on top. Then reduce the heat to medium and steam for 20 minutes. Now if you don't have a steamer, that's totally fine. You can steam them in a microwave. I'll leave directions for that method in the description. While the rice cakes do their thing, place a small pot of water to boil over high heat. Then gently place a couple eggs in and cook for 7 minutes. This is completely optional, but as with most things in life, eggs make everything better. After 7 minutes, drain off the boiling water and shock the eggs with cold water to stop the cooking process. Allow them to sit for at least 5 minutes to help them separate from the shells. My favorite method for removing eggshells easily is by taking a chopstick and lightly, but aggressively, whacking the shit out of it. You want to hit it hard enough to crack the shell, but not so hard as to puncture through. Continue until the entire surface is broken up. Then just peel away the shell while continuously dunking it in the cold water to help remove it more easily. By now, the rice cakes will be fully cooked and ready to be formed. The downside is they're basically like rock hard pieces of concrete. The upside is stand mixers exist and will make the kneading process so much simpler. Definitely don't be like me and allow them to cool a bit first before breaking them apart. Just keep in mind they do still need to be warm in order to properly work them. Attach a dough hook and begin mixing on the lowest speed. If you've worked with dough before, then you know the more you need, the better the end result. Well, rice cakes are literally the opposite. You want to work them as little as possible, just enough to combine them into a smooth, soft dough. Over kneading and mixing will cause them to soften too much and almost turn liquidy. You'll know they're done when they kinda resemble mashed potatoes, and you're able to take a piece and easily shape it with your hands. It should still be very sticky, but without leaving any major residue on your fingers. 
Using a clean work surface, place a few drizzles of sesame oil to help season the rice cakes and prevent them from sticking. Adding a small amount to your hands too will also help. Transfer the dough to the work surface and separate into equal pieces, covering them with a damp towel to prevent them from drying out. Work the dough back and forth in your hands to soften it until nice and smooth and there aren't any cracks. Then roll the dough out into a nice long rope, roughly half to three quarters of an inch in diameter. Using both hands, starting in the center and pushing outwards will keep the dough nice and even. Unless you happen to be looking directly above you into a viewfinder that's a reversed image of what you're doing down in front of you. Then results may vary. Take a baking sheet and thoroughly coat it in sesame oil to prevent sticking and place to the side. You can use a knife to cut the rice cakes, but personally I prefer using a bench scraper or dough blade. Regardless of what you use, apply a layer of sesame oil to that as well. Cut the rice cakes into one and a half inch long pieces, which is roughly the size of frozen commercial rice cakes. After cutting one, you can also use it as a guide for cutting the rest to ensure uniformity. And that's it, homemade rice cakes. They can be eaten right away as they're already fully cooked, nor freeze them on the tray before transferring to a plastic seal bag. They'll keep for a few months at least, as long as they don't start to crack. With the rice cakes done, we can turn our attention to the sauce. So, in a small bowl, combine gochujang, Korean fermented hot pepper paste, gochugaru, Korean hot pepper flakes, corn syrup or rice syrup, soy sauce, minced or grated garlic, and a little splash of fish sauce. Give everything a good stir and set aside. Place a large pan over medium-high heat and add the sauce, along with Korean anchovy stock or, in my case, Japanese dashi. If you can't find or make either yourself, chicken or vegetable stock or even just water will work fine too. Allow the sauce to simmer for about 5 minutes or until it reduces by about a third. Then toss in the rice cakes. Now, traditionally, along with eggs, you'll also find fish cakes in the form of these sheets. And while they are good, I actually prefer using imitation crab. I like the texture a bit better, and you still get that nice fishy taste. But you can, of course, use whatever you'd like. You do you. Continue cooking over medium-high heat until the sauce is almost fully reduced, at which point we can go ahead and add the egg. Adding them at this stage will allow them to warm up as well as soak up some of that spicy, sticky sauce, without them overcooking. Then bust out your fanciest bowl, pile the rice cakes in the center, top with the egg, cutting it in half to expose that gooey, gooey yolk, then garnish with a drizzle of sesame oil, some thinly sliced green onions, and of course, some toasted sesame seeds. And that's it. Korean spicy rice cakes. Full disclosure, I actually struggled with making rice cakes for a solid year before I was finally able to nail the technique. They can be a bit tricky, but definitely don't let that discourage you from trying them. Once you get the hang of it, they're super easy and a fraction of the cost of buying them in a store. While my version is nowhere near as spicy as you're likely to find in a restaurant, they still are without a doubt one of the spiciest things I'm willing to eat they're that good. Also, sorry for the inconsistent upload schedule as of late. It's been hard to find time to get videos done. If you haven't already, check out this channel update I made a while back explaining everything. Enabling the bell notification will also let you know as soon as I upload a new video. If you like my channel and are interested in supporting it while also getting some cool perks, like access to my private Discord server where I post behind the scenes and upcoming episodes, bonus content like my recent Montreal travel vlog, and shoutouts in episodes, you can check out my coffee page. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And hey, if you've made it this far, consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing. They're the easiest ways to help the channel grow and reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome. Where people pay $100 for a promotion. No, no, that's not at all. <sighs> where people pay one. It's weird to say. Where people pay. Um, where was I? Now I've mentioned rice. Now I've mentioned rice cooks before. Rice cooks. Rice cooks. That's a word. Now I've mentioned rice.
cakes. It's gonna call it cookies. Uh, oh. I splashed a bunch of water in my eyes and it really hurts. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. 